In this video, we will have a look at compensatory and non-compensatory decision models in consumer behavior. Compensatory models look at the overall product offering and strong attributes can make up for weak attributes, so they can compensate. Non-compensatory models is where we consider individual product attributes, so a weaker attribute is deemed as unfavorable. Okay, we'll go, what we're going to do is look at a consumer buying a laptop. So the first thing we're going to look at is the compensatory model, and this is how we would structure it. Here we would list the various attributes that uh, we want to look at and consider, and for each of those we would uh, provide an important score. I've scored them out of five, so you can see process is five, price is five, weight is the least important to us at two, and then we score each of the brands out of five, and we get these total scores. So how they're constructed is simply multiplying. So for brand A, five times five is 25, four times five is 20, etc., all the way down, and that adds up to 87. As we can see, brand D has the highest score. So on this approach, which is effectively a scoring model, we would select brand D because it's the best one overall, taking all the factors into account using an important scale. Obviously, the others also score fairly well, but we rule them out as the suitable choice for us. Okay, let's have a look at the four other rules. Let's start by looking at the conjunctive decision rule. That's where we're expecting the, the product to meet the minimum score on all key attributes that we're interested in. So they combine together. So the first thing we're going to have is set up a minimum score. So what are we expecting for every single attribute? And basically, we just work our way through and make sure that they at least match all of them. Brand C scores less than four on RAM, so that's ruled out. Brand A scores less than four on storage, so that is ruled out. And the rest meet these minimums. So we actually end up with two suitable brands, either brand D or B. A disjunctive decision rule is when we're looking for a minimum score on any of our key attributes. And what we've done over here, we've kept the minimum score, but we've only selected the three. These are the three I'm really interested in. These are must-haves for my purchase. So these are not applicable, so we're not even going to consider those attributes. And this one, brand B, only scores three against four. So that doesn't stand out. And basically, on price, brand A rules out, and then brand C rules out as well. So the only one that has a 4, 4, and a 5, at least, is brand D. And that becomes our choice again. Let's now look at the lexicographic decision rule. And in this one, we have to rank the attributes in order of importance. So we've got an important score, but we've got two that are, are fives that one and that one. So we have to make a decision which is the most important attribute for us. So I've chosen this one. I've added the rankings from one to six. So that becomes our most important one. And we just go across which brand scores the highest. And that is brand A. So that is the one selected. Elimination by aspects. We start again in order. What I've put over here is that they're the first ones, they're the second ones, they're the third ones. And we're going to work our way through and we want a minimum score of at least four on each of these. So that's the first one we look at processor. This only scores a three. So brand B is out straight away. We come down here to price. And brand A is out because it's not a four. And so A is out. B is out already, so we don't need to reconsider it. So C and D are hanging in there. And then we come to our second choices. V 
the screen brand Senior is okay, but for RAM, um, it needs to score a four and it doesn't. So that leaves only brand D. So basically, how we would do it is the different approaches. We've got a D as win most of the time, A1 on the uh, most important attribute one, lexicographic, and we may consider brand B. Um, here is our results from our compensatory model, which we looked at initially. And it's interesting to note that obviously D is the strongest and tended to do quite well in whatever a decision approach we had. But brand C is the second strongest overall, but was not selected at any time. So hopefully um, that makes sense for you.